Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Standback, back in the building again for another episode of <laughs> Let Me Tell You Something with Big Nate Dude. I have y'all a see? question to open this <laughs> oh, show. Lord. Lord, Yesterday, Lord. my boy what? Standback, Isaiah the Freak, went around telling everybody, do you love the stars? <sighs> oh, do you love the stars? Because we got the cracking for you. Isaiah, what happened last night? Uh, see what happened was Nate. Uh, <laughs> see, see, and, and for those that don't know, my, some of y'all might have grew up in some really nice neighborhoods, you know. But for those right. that grew up in the hood, we got a little saying when things don't go your way, and it, it's it's not. Let me tell you something. It's what had happened was, and uh, <laughs> and, and what, and what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> and what had happened was the Seattle Kraken got smacked up against the Dallas Stars. What was the uh, score, this, Isaiah? Uh, see what had happened was um, <laughs> on uh, what, what night was that? Tuesday night, the, the right. Dallas Stars beat the Kraken six to three. Right. But on that, the previous what was it? Saturday or uh-huh. Sunday? Sunday. The previous yes, Sunday, the uh, Dallas Stars got scraped up by the Seattle Kraken seven to two. Wow. So wow. this series is going back and forth, and um, it's going to come down. I think it's going to come down to Game Seven, Nate. Right? It's at the time of this filming. It's two and two. Uh, he's coming back to the crib in Dallas, and we need. I need Seattle to step up. You know, I need Seattle wow. to step up. I'm at, okay. I'm at to find my way back in the building over there. You know, right now, I think me being in the building with the Seattle Kraken against the Dallas Stars in Dallas. When I'm there, they're two and one. So I think I might need to show up so we can go three and one. Hey, it, it's it's something shining behind you, man. What what is that behind you? Man? What what's that light? Oh, that back there, Nate. Oh, that's that blue light. That's that blue light special. That's for my Seattle Kraken boys. Sometimes you got to put one up and you got you got to put it up in the air, kind of like a bat signal. You know what I'm saying? You got to represent. <laughs> okay, the crack. I'm gonna hold them down. Now, you know I'm C town forever, man. I love I, I love and appreciate Dallas, but you know you don't you don't forget home. You know okay. I, I represent home. No okay. disrespect. No disrespect. Yeah. All right. We're going to bounce. We're going to bounce back, man. We're going to bounce back. Ah, geez. A lot of stuff popping <laughs> off, man. Yeah. I did make man. a lot of bets, though, Nate. You know, I don't, I don't bet money. I bet all about bragging rights and pride. So, right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of things that I have to go back and, and, and talk to some cats because they, they're going to be in my face. I already got people sending me Instagram reels and stories talking about, oh, you don't show up to work when, when, the, when the Dallas Stars win, huh? They, they all in my head, Nate. They on my head. Wow, I hear That's you, man. Right, well, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that y'all didn't pull it out. I'm not a big hockey fan, <laughs> but I'm enthusiastic that I know somebody that does. I uh, love yeah. hockey, you know, and, and 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 you know, riding with it and those ends and out and can tell me what's happening. Uh, I'm, but I'm what, like, what else like do you have, for us, man? I just like competition, Nate. That's, oh, that's like, the, at, at, oh, at don't, my don't, core. Don't come with that, man. No, don't, what you mean? Don't come with that. <laughs> it's, whenever it's about anything, Seattle. Mariners, Seahawks, uh-huh. Kraken, uh-huh. now the defunct Oklahoma Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> he says it's all about competition when they don't win. But when they win, yeah. oh, he has statistics, numbers, analytics, everything, my friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, might, that might be a little right. That might be a little right. But <laughs> but I, I love competition. You know, we always touch on these Dallas Cowboys a little bit before we get yes. into some other stuff. But the Dallas Cowboys, the official – at the time of this filming, the official schedule for the 2023-2024 season has not been released yet. Okay? Um, by the time this is posted, it probably will be. However, I did see – that the Dallas Cowboys are playing a couple teams, Nate, yes, that sir. you hold in high regard. And I'm, one yes, of those sir. happens to be my city, Seattle. They, yes, they, sir. Uh, it looks like they're going to be playing the Seattle Seahawks down in Dallas uh, at some point in time during the season. Uh, and we, I know how much you hold uh, Pete Carroll in high regard, so that should yeah, be a nice yeah. little head-to-head. Um, but they also get to play them boys that they have nightmares about, the 49ers. Uh, not for real. Do we go to them or they come to us? I don't know yet. 
Lord, let them know. come to us. <laughs> I, I, let them come to because I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. It's a, when I played when I, when Nathaniel Newton Jr. played, but I don't uh-huh. know, aka Nate Newton. Yeah. We were the physical team. Mm. We were the team that smashed folks. We was like Hulk smash. Okay. Now it, it seems like it's it, it's it's shifted the other way a little bit. The Cowboys are not as physical as they should be, and the 49ers are all that. They come huh. with it. They are the new Hulk in the league. When you play them, they're gonna get hard running. Up the middle, outside traps, screens, anything where they can, they linemen can get out and lay hands on you. So I'm hoping that the Cowboys them. can, yes, can 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 <laughs> get them at the home front with a big crowd. I hope that me and Isaiah can be at the stadium revving it up, getting it going. Yeah, turn them up one time. But but Nate, you talk about the physicality. Right? Let me just lean into that a little bit. The Dallas Cowboys seemingly have addressed it or have been trying to address the physicality aspect of their team, especially on defense, by picking up the Ricky Massey Smith and then also re-signing big Jonathan Hankins. So they yes. got two big nasties, and that's what you've been asking for. The people know big Nate Dog wants the big nasties in the middle so that you, when you face the 49ers of the world, you can, you can clog up the middle. Now that you have them, we still got Nate saying that they ain't going to be physical enough. Is that, is that what you're saying? The, no, what I'm saying is – I go by past pa- recent past history. Got you. Okay. And even though we stopped them in the playoffs, we suffered all during the year. We mm. slowed them down a little bit in the playoffs, but when they needed to run to get a yard or two to get a first down or when they needed a crit- critical run play, they were still able to do it. When you have arrived is when you can play great situational football. Yeah. When it's first and when it's when when it's second and and four and you trying to throw them back and they got the option to run a pass but you got a bulldog up the middle where they gonna like nah we ain't gonna try this and we know Hankins can do it and we hoping that the big Smith the first round pick out of Michigan we hoping that he can do it see Correct. because uh, I call it how it is my boy Galloway I'm a Gal excuse me Gallimore and those other guys haven't Ooh. been able to do that. Nate, and you know, until the word they is, do that, yeah, they, yeah. they're going to have a mindset that, hey, let's lay hands on them. Let's play leverage ball. Let's get, let's get myself lower than them, get myself blowing off the ball, and, and, and we're going to have to stop them. And once you stop them, not once, not twice, but in, only, in all the critical situations, it's, it's all right in the first quarter. It's all yeah. right in the second quarter. But the third and the fourth, you got to say no, no. And you got to do like the great Matumbo used to do. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> hey, yeah. Nate, who's going to be the odd man out? Now, obviously, the camp hasn't happened. OTAs haven't even happened yet. You know, Ricky Minicamp is popping up this weekend. Who is going to be the odd man out on the defensive line, especially the interior defensive line, when the dust settles? I, I, I can't call it. I, I, I you really brought, can't, you brought up You brought up Gallimore. You think Gallimore is uh, going to be able to hold, hold the ground? The, the, the one thing that your boy Quinn does, mm-hmm. Coach Quinn, is he believes in competition. That word that you threw out earlier. Yes, sir. But no, uh, he believes in competition. What Gallimore cannot do, even though he's a veteran guy, he can't miss practice. He cannot let Hankins or he cannot let uh, this new uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, Mozzie Smith. Mozzie, yep. They cannot. He cannot let these guys start getting all of the reps. You got to be healthy. You got to be in there, and you got to be competing. And then they got the big kid. They moved from offense, who's bigger yeah. than Alakon. Yeah, this dude here, King Kongish. I mean, when you see him, I mean, he just <laughs> whoa. He's a beast. I mean, as a man. Now I don't know how he is as a football yeah, exactly. player, but well, if he just human. get low and put his arms out, he making hold up some folks. That's so, a large and, and human being. That's that's been the uh, the problem, Isaiah. Is everybody want to get upfield? See, when you're when you're a leader, who is is Michael Parsons, who is a a hundred percent defensive end now. When you're a leader, is a sack master, and he's blowing past people getting sacks. That kind of uh, infects the whole defensive line because not everybody wants. Let me make a play. 
You're not yeah. Parsons. Yeah. Mozzie, you're not Parsons. Don't let them tell you that you got a sneaky pass rush. Tell them you got a, a hell of a run stopping plug. That's what yeah. that's what you are. Hankins, the same with you. Because what I've learned, if you stop the run, all of a sudden you'll fall in on some sacks. But if you can't stop the run and they blowing you off the ball, you won't even get a chance to play. Absolutely. That's how you got to look at that. That's how you got to rock that. That's how you got to believe that. Big Noon ain't lying to you. It's a, <laughs> let me tell you something. And I, and I know we, 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 we trying to be specific, but let me tell you something. Mike McCarthy, he, this is last year. He Ooh. needs perfection. Ooh. He needs people to do what they ask you to do. He needs for you to do your job. Do your job so Coach McCarthy can be here on an extension. I, I don't want another coaching change. I don't need another coach. We are projected up. We are, the projection is up. So don't, 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 don't not do your job. And so Gallimore, I ain't saying you're the odd man out. Somebody else said that on the show. But you need to play. <laughs> you all right? He's got to show up and show up in a big way, Nate, because there's you a lot of competition show show out, on, man. on that defensive line. You got to remember, people forget that the Dallas Cowboys drafted uh, interior defense alignment last year. Yes. And what did they do with him, Nate? We had to release him because we had a lot of bodies that wasn't proven. And so they released him, and he went to the uh, commanders. I think he started a few games and was Facts. heavily in the rotation. Facts. So, so you're saying yeah. that we didn't – that the Dallas Cowboys front office did not miss um, Big John Ridgeway. They just didn't have the time to wait on him. Yes, yes, because they were trying to get Gallimore and other guys to to step up and do what they needed to do. And uh, the young kid we sat down to the uh, – who we released, I can't think of his name, second-round pick a few years ago, yeah. uh, on Marinelli's pick, you know, and I love Coach Marinelli, but that was his pick. And uh, that kid didn't work out. So yeah. we've been missing big time. Uh, Cost Leon let his job. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, some wow. other cats too. Big lad, I love you, man. I I chose not to call you because I know I don't want you to. I, I don't even want to discuss it, man. Go ahead. Yeah, they let, they let some good dudes go. But uh, yeah. all right, <clears throat> we're gonna get out of that. Now it's going, going the fact that there's a lot of rookies coming in. Okay, you got the rookie mini camp popping up, Nate. And I couldn't help but you know this is one of my one of my toilet thoughts. And you ever had them toilet thoughts? This, this is when your best <laughs> yeah. your, your best yeah. thinking happens. You know, you yeah, sitting on the toilet. When I'm thinking about Niagara ain't something in my toilet yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need me some extra water, some less water. Yeah, yeah. See Niagara, see Niagara, y'all got to take care of my boy Nate. See right now he got to flush it two times before yeah. he's off the toilet. Yeah, we need yeah. a, we need an efficient flush. You and then when I, mean? I got them toilet thoughts, it's Olivia <laughs> Ham hanging out there a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Niagara, y'all gonna come through. But one yeah. of my one of my toilet thoughts, Nate, I was sitting there and I was like, as Ricky Minicamp is approaching, you know, not only for the Cowboys, but just all across the nation with all these professional athletes. There is there has to be a few things. I know there was for me that you wish that you would have done different. Mm -hmm. And and I was thinking, I was like, man, when I first got here, what was the dumb purchase that I made? And what was the investment that I missed out on? And those are, those are, I, I have my two, Nate, but I'm, well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to let you think my about dumb, yours. Well. My dumb oh, investment, you got it. it still is that to this day, I go buy a new car in a heartbeat. That is the dumbest investment in the world. Mm. Buy you one car and ride that thing to the ground. It does not repay it for itself ever, ever, ever. You know, you can't be praying for badness, a pandemic to come, so you could get your car paid get off. Your money come on, back. man. Yeah. And and uh one investment, I still don't do it. I try to beg my wife, land. Oh, I had talk a chance to, him, to buy the land in Frisco. Oh, if I'd have bought that thing 30 years ago, man, I'd have been sitting out there with Mr. Jones on his yacht, like, yo, what's up, Jerry? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's crazy that you say those things. So vehicles. Vehicles weren't necessarily my vice. I love vehicles, Nate. You know right. I love me some vehicles, especially right. I love me some Tesla, okay? Right, um, right. I bought a dumb watch. <laughs> I mean, it was dumb, Nate. I mean, this yeah. thing, this is back, and it's seemingly coming back around, and I, it kind of came to my mind. 
uh, when I was sitting there because I'm watching the draft and these guys are coming up with these big old chains on. They got these these necklaces, yeah. got their initials on them and their numbers. And I'm like, y'all gonna wear that for about about six months, and then, and then it's gonna phase out, and then you're gonna be sitting there with a quote unquote asset that you can't get rid of because the jeweler's not gonna buy it back. You're gonna be sitting up there squatting on something that you can't wear because if you wear it, you just look silly wearing it. Right now, it's hot. It, later on, it's not, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and that's how I that's how I fell into that trap, Nate. With with little jewelry, I'm not a I'm not a big gaudy guy, right? In terms of necklaces right. and all that, and I can't wear a lot of that stuff because I have eczema. But I like a nice watch, Nate. I yeah. like a nice watch, and I well, like I, a little. I see that all during the year. Yeah, how many watches <laughs> you have? Oh, so you uh, wait? Hold on now, hold on. You say you bought a dumb watch. But you got thirty five watches that you wear almost a different watch Nate, every week. It was carried, and you know what? And the one I'm referring to, the one I'm referring to, you right. have never seen. Okay. You have never seen. It. When you go break it, is it a flavor? I'm not flavor? breaking that one. Is it a flavor flavor that you put around your neck? Flavor flay. Listen here, if I wear that watch, I'm gonna have to hear you and Barry's mouth, and I am not prepared for that. Because wow. as soon as I walk in, your eyes are going to be like, wow. And Barry's going to be like, oh. So yeah. I'm not I'm not prepared for either Barry of those. Like, oh, no, he did. <laughs> I can hear Barry. No, he did. He knew but, what's up with that. <laughs> I mean, Nate, this wow. thing, no lie. I know we're on, on the air on, on online mostly in terms of people listening to us. But this, this bezel was huge. Wow. This bezel was huge. All diamonds. Blinged out. Didn't you matter what. A nice little price for it, or you listen here, Nate. Uh, you you beat them. You beat them. You beat them down. I think I paid back back in two thousand and seven. I want to say I paid fifteen grand for this watch. Ooh, boy, yeah. You I you know what? I'm gonna call you somebody else. Name. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I say? That ain't you. That's not that me. Type of money. That ain't That's not you. me. No, I know. Wow. I know. Yeah, so Whoa, I was tripping, geez. Nate. So, and the fact that I still have this thing lets you know this was a terrible investment. Mm-hmm. And as humble of an individual as I consider myself to be, as low maintenance, as low key, as behind the scenes, as you know, I'm chill. I I got caught up. I got caught up just just briefly, but mm-hmm. I got caught up. I got caught up with what everybody else was doing for my entire life. I had blinders on, right? My right, entire right. life, I had blinders wow. on. I, I can give, I can give two craps about what everybody else was doing, but for the first time, I was not being me. To your point, right? That was not Zay. Yeah, that was not wow. Zay, and it cost me financially, right? I mean, I mean, some people are gonna say, okay, fifteen grand, whatever, depending on your financial situation. That's fifteen thousand dollars you don't get back, right? Yeah, had wow. I put that fifteen thousand dollars into something else at that time, investment, well, you could have bought like four acres of land easily. Ooh, right out here in Frisco. Right. So and so that was my dumb, my dumb decision, my investment opportunity that I wish I would have had my mind set on it. And I wish I had the knowledge I have today back then. Same thing that you said, Nate, land, 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 land. Yeah. Um, I wish I could go back in time and and buy some land. I was very, very sound in in in. Mm-hmm. I didn't trust people. Right, right. So when things presented themselves, I didn't have a team in place to fully investigate and do their due diligence to find out if it was a good investment or not. Right. Um, I relied heavily on financial advisors because I didn't have the financial knowledge at the time to really dive into things myself and make an educated and informed decision. That ended up costing me too, and I don't think I've ever told you about this one here, Nate. Yeah. I had a financial advisor, really good dude, he's a really good brother. He's actually my brother's best friend, right. um, by the name of Chris, and he was working with Merrill Lynch. Was it Merrill Lynch at the time? I think it was right. Merrill Lynch. That's that's back when Merrill Lynch was hot, right? Yeah. He was taking care of me, making sound decisions. It wasn't nothing sexy. I didn't really understand a lot of stuff that he was doing, but hey, it was, I knew it was safe. Right. At a certain point, I started again, Nate. I started, I started going to these 
uh, on these trips. There was a, one of these uh, popular agents in the Dallas area that would take yeah. athletes on, on a trip. And he would, on those trips, he would bring in different speakers from different industries and inform and educate athletes. And it was a safe place, right? right? And it ended up biting me in my butt, Nate. And how it ended up biting me in my butt was I left my financial advisor that had had my back and my family's back for our entire right. life. And I went with what I thought everybody else was doing. And what mm-hmm. I thought I should have been doing wow. by doing that, Nate, this gentleman started asking me for all my friends lists, right? I had a lot of friends that I went, that I grew up with that went to the NBA. Right. So these guys had a pocket full of money, all my good bros. I can text in a heartbeat, call them in a yeah. heartbeat. They'll answer. Well, he started wanting their contacts and, I, and, it, and it kind of raised the red flag for me, kind of raised the red flag. And I was like, no, no, no. I don't really share my network. You know, my network is everything. Yeah, I, don't wow. share, I don't share my network. So raise a red flag. Communication started going down a little bit, Nate. I had played some years. This is probably year four. It was actually my contract year in Seattle right. where I was like, hey, I'm, I'm making money. I'm not spending money. Right. I had already did my dumb right. decision buying my watch. I had bought my vehicles. Right. I had bought a boat. Some of the things, I, all of these things I should not have done, but I made a couple of dumb decisions, but I wasn't spending much money, right. but my account wasn't going up. Wow. And I remember sitting there, I'm like, yo, there's something between him asking these questions and my account not going up. Like ah, I hear these stories, the cats getting got Nate. And like, right, I, I know right. that they, I know that ain't me. You know what I'm saying? Like pfft. I pulled my money out. Nate, I, at the time I had about, I had about 300 K in right. account. I pulled it out. Didn't call him, didn't text him, didn't give him a heads up or nothing. They pulled it out, pow, pulled it out. Right. Put it into another account. Never heard from him. Wow. He was getting ready to get you big. He got me. And wow. to this day, I still don't know how much he got me. Right. How and much you lost I, in investments and everything, huh? Wow. Wow, so, man. That make you want to sit up and take notice. People out there that make you want to sit up and take notice. Wow. So somebody who was as secure, as safe, as chill, mm-hmm. as nonchalant, as, as un, I don't even know what the term I'm looking for. I, I laid low and I didn't spend crazy. I thought I was doing things the right way. And I still ended up a victim. And wow. it wasn't until last year. I received an email from an investigator from, I don't think it wasn't the FBI. It was some, one of those secret, um, right. secret, it wasn't secret service, something like one of those, one of those um, branches. Yeah. And, and they told the me that they, people, bro. Yeah. They told me Probably that they're investigating, ass. they're investigating him. They brought his name up. They asked me, they said, do you know who this individual is? I was like, yeah, <laughs> I know who he is, you know, but I try to delete it, Nate, because we don't want to, when when bad things like that happen to us, we don't want to really right. have to face it. We rather just like, hey, it, it, like just just be done with it. I don't want to have to deal right. with it anymore. I'm already mad enough. There's nothing I could do about it. And they asked me about him, and I and they were investigating him right now. So I'm in the process of trying to track down a bunch of old statements and things like that from 15 years ago. Right, right. <laughs> you wow. know, um, so that they can try to retrieve whatever whatever money and find out whatever money he took from me because. It might be, it might be 10,000. It might be, it might be a couple hundred thousand. I don't know. Right. I really don't know. Um, and yes, woe on me for not paying enough attention at that time, but that's just where I was at. at not that time. having a financial background in, in literacy in, in that regard. And I became a victim because of it. So this all came to mind, the dumb decisions, the lack of opportunities that we, that we passed up. When I start thinking about these rookies that are coming in, and I want to know if you had any experiences similar to that, or if you know anybody nah. who has had any kind of experiences like nah, that. I was my own worst enemy, man. So I, I was fortunate. My agent, I stuck with for the duration. You know, a lot of guys came in, hey, I can get more. Hey, okay, you can get more, but I, this guy I trust. But I tell you, man, I, you know, if you get a chance to rap to any of the rookies, or you get a chance to people watching this, share this with your friends who got kids that are 
in, in, in college getting this, um, this, this new form of money that you can receive. Uh, because if you don't do it right, two things going to happen. Somebody going to get you and the IRS going to come and get you. Because it's just, you know, it just make me think of things like that because, you know, a lot of guys didn't even understand about paying taxes. Yeah. You know, my, my agent, Jim Nieder, bless his heart, he was like, hey, man, you know, I'm going to hook you up with this guy. If he tell you to take this amount of money out or set this aside, do this because it's for taxes. And he said, Nate, I don't care what you do. Don't touch this money. And to this day, when I get up parents, so much go out. And I've always been able to pay my taxes. I've all, and I had an accident where they didn't take out enough mm. in my household. And I still was able to get them taxes yeah. paid because of what he taught me over the years. I'm a simple dude, man. Yeah. You know that. You know that. Yep. I mean, I still got the same suits I had when I played as a cowboy. Some of them so big. You know, gave me your, your lady your lady to take up the suits, and I still ain't yeah. take up the suits. <laughs> and so I, I'm not a, I'm not a big spender man either. Not anymore. I mean, uh, I'm a lot older than you. You know, I ain't a cracking. I, I mean, I ain't crack yet. But, uh, <laughs> hey, no, but please, people out there, listen to what this young man has just said. Share this with your kids. Share this with your friends, especially up and coming guys that are coming out of high school, starting to get this new money. Uh, hey, take care of it. It can last you a long time. Yeah, it definitely can last you a long time. And it doesn't matter if you're a pro athlete or if you're just somebody who's in, in business in general, working your way right. up the corporate ladder. Like, take the time. We have more resources now than an accessibility to resources than we've ever had in life. It just, you know, it's the crazy. funny thing about it, man. What's that? Somebody that said, hey, go to YouTube and see this. Go to TikTok and see this. These same things that you use to go out and entertain yourself has, the, has these some of these programs on how to help you be an investor on your own, how to Correct. research people. This, this information is out there. It's just depending on how you look at life. Yep. Very much so. Very much so. So, y'all do not be a victim on junior like me. I never wow. thought in my life as secure as I am, as, as smart as I believe that I am, that I would ever get got. And yet I still got got, and I right. still don't know to what extent. And a part of me, part of me wants to know, part of me wants to know just so if there is something out there for me to get back that I could pass it off to my kids but the other side of me doesn't want to know because I don't want that anger to come out of me. You, because... you know, I tell people I'm a, I'm a nonviolent man. I close my eyes when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy once told me, though, son, don't ever point a gun at me. Don't ever mess with my mama. And please leave my money alone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I was like, okay, daddy, okay. <laughs> And he Absolutely. told me, he told me that. He, I mean, he had a look on his face like he wanted to get me. But I'm like, Dad, I ain't did nothing to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. And he was just trying to share. It, those three things have always, you know, threatening somebody. Correct. Uh, hurting their family members or yep. taking their money can make folks act up real quick. Real mild man up people are turning to folks you don't recognize real quick. And that's a for show sure right on, right there from the big <laughs> Nate Newton. <laughs> well, man, hey, Nate, thanks for sharing some some of your wisdom. Uh, I hope yeah. that somebody, hopefully this helps some of these people, man, especially yeah. some of these rookies or people that just come into money. There's I mean, a lot you're of young. You're going to be out there Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm coming out there Friday. Yeah, okay. I got to go out of town, take care of some business for my school. We trying to uh, give some charity, some st clothes away, new clothes, and stuff like that okay. on Tuesday. Gotcha. And, uh, but, man, I'm telling you, uh, I'm going to be out there Friday because all I want to see is, is yep. Mozzie okay. and Luke. That's all I want to see. Now, everybody else talking about the second, third, the third, fourth, fifth round. <laughs> I ain't, bruh. I'm coming out there to see two players. Yep. Two players. All right. That's it. I even I got a boy from from fam. I, I ain't All coming right. to see him. I want to see these two guys. And uh and then I when when you know when training camp start, I want to see them Absolutely. in the rotation. 
That's all there I need. All right, man. Well, hey, you know what we always say, Big Nate? Niagara? We on flushed another we one. Flushed another one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with these thoughts we done had, you need exactly. to ever get our toilet. We want the to single it. flush. We don't want to do the double flush. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey man, it's right. your boy Isaiah, your boy wow. Big Nate. See you next time on Let Me Tell You Something. Yes. Crack it. <laughs>